Thank you so much for being here today. It's great to see some friendly faces in the audience. Um, so just to kick us off, I, I'm interested in who's here today. How many here are an AWS consulting partner today? Raise your hands. Great. OK, good to see you. What about an ISV software partner? Great. Good. OK. Distributors? Woo! All right. Good. Great. Thank you guys all for making the time. Really excited to meet you. Um, unfortunately, we don't have time for Q&A because it's just a 20-minute talk. And I want to tell you a lot about where we're expanding in SMB together. Uh, but welcome to come see me after. And please feel free to take down my name, connect with me on LinkedIn, send me a message. I'll put my email up on the end. Um, so reach out to me in any way, and we can continue the conversation. Thanks for coming. OK, let's get started. Oh, I don't have my clicker. That's the problem. OK. <laughs> OK, so today we're going to talk a little bit about the SMB segment as a whole, how AWS defines small and medium businesses, current trends we're seeing in the market, and how we help our partners scale profitably into this segment. I'm also going to cover some AWS programs and resources that we have specifically to help you scale here. So first, let's just start with the size of the opportunity. I know you're here because you see the opportunity out there. But something to know about AWS is that we don't have a mid-market segment. So for us, SMBs are far from small. Not only are there 235 million SMB customers worldwide, but we see that they represent over 98% of all businesses and over 45% of global GDP, or gross domestic product. We also see that they have a total addressable spend of $234 billion, according to IDC, and that's just in this year. So what do we mean when we say SMB here at AWS? We actually define an SMB company based on their gross annual revenues. If they make up to $100 million at the global level, we consider them SMB. We do have a little bit of variation by country. So if you specialize in one particular country, again, welcome to contact me and happy to give you more information about that country. Um, but this is our global standard. Because there are 235 million businesses, it's really important that we sub-segment. And so we do that by breaking into three basic groups. The first is what we consider a large SMB. They make 30 to 100 million in annual revenues. Again, that's not related to their current spend on AWS, but just how much they make as a company where we see opportunity to then bring their spend on AWS. In a large SMB, they, they operate a, like a quasi-enterprise. We see about a million of these. And they have a builder and a buyer persona within the company. So how you scale into a mid-market or enterprise company can be very similar to how you approach this customer market. Below that $30 million threshold, we see a very different buying motion from that customer. And we recognize that. So here we call it an SMB core customer. And we separate those core customers between a builder persona and a buyer persona. A builder persona is very tech savvy. Technology is at the heart of their business. They might be a quasi ISV. They might be a traditional company that's modernizing, but they have a very strong technology strategy. Many of those companies are today self-service customers on AWS. And then we have a core buyer persona. These are very traditional SMB customer. It includes your mom and pop shops. It includes your retail businesses. This is the largest subsegment at 186 million customers. Across all these segments, I want to make very clear that our AWS North Star is to have a partner involved in every single customer account. And we're taking broad strides internally to make that happen. We recognize the value that partners bring to these customers and the relationships that you're already holding. So much of what I'll present to you today is in service of this mission here. So first, I did want to start with some market trends, things that we are seeing. First of all, that spend is increasing. We're seeing that 73% of companies plan to increase their IT spending, even in our economic downturn market. And IDC is forecasting that that TAS of the SMB customers is going to rise to $477 billion by 2027. So part of why we're making such bold steps here is that we see that the time is now to help these companies modernize and to use cloud to leapfrog some of their larger counterparts and to be competitive in their own markets and serve their own customers. And of course, as I mentioned, we see that 87% of SMBs work with IT service providers, software vendors, and service providers. And that's why we absolutely want to scale with and through our partners. 
couple key workload trends that we're seeing I wanted to highlight. The first is SaaS. SMBs are modernizing using SaaS products at a huge rate. 60% say they have a SaaS first strategy. And on average, even in that SMB core buyer market, we're seeing them use 12.1 different SaaS applications. That's a huge opportunity for our ISV and software vendors. It's also a huge opportunity for our service providers and managed service providers because these customers need a partner who's going to help them knit together those various SaaS applications, help secure them, and then also simplify the procurement and the billing of those applications. How many times have you been in a small SMB office and the person, a receptionist there, has got two or three different ISV apps up on their screen and they're switching and entering your information across all of them, right? This is the potential of the cloud to come and integrate that, improve some of the data analytics and offsite, and really help those SMBs better serve their end customers. Second big trend is security. I'm here in the security zone, which is perfect. 56% uh, of SMBs have experienced a cyber attack just in the last 12 months. Security is absolutely front of mind for all SMB owners. In fact, these uh, cyber attacks have cost an average of $1.2 million. So it's a huge impact to their business. And AI, ML, and generative AI, of course, SMBs are modernizing just like everyone else, but what is really interesting here is that we see SMBs have a desire to use this technology, but they're smart, right? They're not necessarily going to have generative AI inside their core business operations, but they are already expecting their partners to be modernized. They expect their SaaS applications to be using Gen AI or AI ML, and they expect their service providers to understand how using machine learning can help serve their business. So whether it's document scanning, reading text, chat bots, um, there's a lot of business outcome uh, uh, abilities for Gen AI to help SMBs today. All right, so I have six best practices that I'd love to share with you. Um, my role is global and I've just recently come from traveling all throughout Singapore, India, London, talking to partners um, all over the world. And we're really seeing some commonalities in what's helping our partners be successful. So the first is having a scalable demand generation capability. Are you leveraging digital marketing? And back to that AIML, do you have generative AI and AIML in your demand generation? How are you reaching out to small and medium business customers? We see that increasingly, they're even making decisions in a digital manner. They're used to getting those emails, they're used to interacting online. So the more you can reduce cost in that very upfront component of your demand, the better. Uh, also having an always on, marketing nurture will really help to ensure that you've got that demand coming in and you can be reaching out to those customers. The second is packaged offerings with predictable pricing. One of the key asks that SMB customers have is, how do I know that my cloud spend isn't going to get out of control? How do I really compartmentalize and understand the business outcome that I'm getting for the cost that I'm getting? And so we see partners have a ton of success with a scalable offering that's very easy for their sellers to understand, for our AWS sellers to understand, and for the customer to understand. And these don't always have to be a full deployable solution. You can do a full deployable solution and you can sell it on our AWS marketplace and get great scale. But there's also a lot of simpler options as well around having a price per VM migration offer, for example. Or in the distribution world, we've seen some success with what we call a starter kit, where it's just a very simple workload, like a move to manage databases or a backup and recovery workload with a t-shirt size of small, medium, large. The customer can engage with, they understand how it's going to help their business, and it really starts that conversation. It may be what you end up deploying in the customer account, it may not, but it was a way to put cloud into terms that they could easily understand and keep that conversation progressing. Um, another good example is like a one-day workshop for a fixed fee, right? Any way that you can really package and make it easy to get started, uh, we see a lot of success. Um, and you've heard me talk in very business outcome-driven language, right? That is absolutely critical, especially in that core buyer segment. There aren't as many technologists. A lot of times they outsource nearly all of their IT. And so if you're selling into a line of business buyer or the CEO of a company, ensuring you have that business case, 
increasingly we're seeing verticalization be so important. We know that SMBs first identify with their industry and then as a small and medium business. So if you're a small dentist office, you're going to look for healthcare solutions and then those that scale into small businesses. You're not going to go to a small business page, right? So that's important as you're building out that scalable demand generation machine. Are you doing that in industry specific language? And that's something that here at AWS we're getting more and more sophisticated in and we're really excited to work with partners who have those customer success stories in that industry and that can help us promote how cloud is helping customers just like the ones we're talking to. So let's talk a little bit more about business outcome driven. I wanted to share a methodology that we use internally within AWS sales today. And what we found is that all of our end customers have existing durable needs that don't really change over time. They want to delight their end customers and their employees. They need to reduce costs inside their business and they need to grow their revenues. And if we can align the products and how cloud technologies can help them across these three dimensions, we know we're going to have a productive conversation with that customer. And here's how we do it. We call this framework MOM, or Modernize, Optimize, and Monetize. Um, the guy who named it says it's, he named it because mom always knows best, and I'm a mother, so I love that phrase. <laughs> um, so modernize, it's how do we help make sure that you're delighting your end customers as a B2B play, right? And just starting the conversation with your customer around what do these three words mean to you? What does modernizing your infrastructure, your services to your end customers mean to you today? starting there and then starting to bring in how the cloud can help them do that. And same thing with optimize. How are they optimizing across that business, whether it's automating processes using machine learning, whether it's lowering costs, maybe even of their existing cloud consumption, maybe it's moving to a more agile methodology. And then finally, what are they doing to monetize and make new revenue streams? We've seen that SMBs have started uh, collecting more data than ever through the pandemic, right? Many people moved to digital and now they have information on their customer base they never used to collect. Is there an opportunity to help them turn that into new revenue streams for their business? So by starting with these terms and working backwards into how we can help the customer, um, we found that we can make cloud much more approachable and, and more tangible in the benefits we're able to deliver. All right, fourth best practice is, as a partner, differentiate yourself, right? It's, it's a very broad scale market, and so I mentioned a little about industry. That's a great way uh, to differentiate how you can help that end customer that both the customer can recognize and then here at AWS we can as well. Um, have case studies in that industry and tailor your messaging to that customer. You can also do it by workload, having a speciality in databases, data analytics, security. You know, those are great ways to be sticky, both in the customer's mind and with our AWS sellers. Have a land and expand strategy. We talk a lot about what we call tri-party or partners helping partners. So critical here in the SMB space. There's enough scale for all players. The more we can work together and help these companies understand what modernizing their infrastructure will do for their business, the more we will all succeed. And there's no better way to do that. If you're an SI partner selling an ISV solution, as we mentioned, those SMB customers, often the first thing they're buying is SaaS. Right? If you're the one helping them onboard and utilize that SaaS, that's a great way to then get into the account and grow their spend from there. Um, or having a, those bite-sized workload offers is another great way to do a land and expand. And finally, I mentioned partner to partner. I stole my own thunder, but it's leverage others, work with other partners. Um, so ISV and SI, really common pairing. Of course, leverage a distributor. If you're an SI partner, you want to work with a distributor. Um, but also leveraging you know, SI to SI partnerships as well. If you, know, if you don't have a speciality or expertise, um, you can work with another partner. And there's a lot of ways that the partner network can help you to do that. Having hundreds of thousands of partners in our network um, really is, is a benefit here. And so lean on each other, leverage each other, and of course come to your AWS PDM if you need any help finding the right partner to work with. All right, so a couple AWS programs and resources I really wanted to highlight today. First, the Customer Engagement Incentive, or CEI. We just launched this in August. Hopefully you're mostly familiar with it. Um, if not, please look it up. But it's a new incentive for our SI partners that helps provide you investment from AWS to go after what we call a greenfield customer, or a customer that's new and developing on their AWS spend, and grow that customer account over time. 
So we actually pay a cash incentive to our SI partners when they scope an initial customer workload if that is a new customer to AWS. And we pay that when the opportunity reaches business validation. Then, if you're able to launch that opportunity, we pay an additional cash incentive at that point. And if you bring that customer onto your own resell, we'll actually give you an additional margin on that customer's business because we recognize they're a new customer and you're growing them. So why did we do this? I'm really excited about this incentive for a couple of reasons. Um, it's the earliest I've ever seen us pay in the sales cycle. That was really important to us because we recognize that doing this demand generation into a new customer who hasn't adopted AWS or potentially even cloud before, it's costly and there's a risk to it. Not all these customers are going to move forward and we want to share in that risk with you. So we're going to pay early in the sales cycle so you can use this funding to grow your team, I think I have a slide on this, right? You can use it to grow your demand generation team. You can use it to do marketing. If you are a larger partner and you sell multiple products, you could use it to comp your sellers. There's a lot of different ways you can leverage this. If you're an ISV, what's so important here is that your channel receives this benefit if they sell your product on AWS. So promote it to your channel, right? How are they growing the business for you and for AWS and leveraging this incentive to do that? Um, the second thing that's unique about this is we really intend this money to help offset the cost of sale to the partner. Many of our APN incentives are for that end customer, right? Like a POC or um, offset the cost of the sow. It's really to help that customer make the buying decision, which is excellent. This is uh, additional on top of those incentives, but it's to help the partner make investments inside their own business um, to then go help that customer and bring that message to market. Um, another great way I've seen partners use this is to build some of those packaged offerings. Um, for example, leverage this funding to offer a one-day free workshop because you know that you'll you know, get back uh, the, the cash incentive um, for every opportunity that you've generated out of that workshop. All right, so to go along with this incentive, um, we have launched a sales and marketing guide as well. This is a compilation of all of the go-to-market campaigns as well as sales training and resources that we offer specifically around acquiring new customers to AWS. So this is available in that APN portal to all partners. Please go check it out. A lot of great resources compiled here. Um, again, around our major use cases like migration, backup and storage, security data analytics, Windows modernization. Um, so check out these great resources and we want to hear your feedback around what else will help. Um, a lot of folks have sellers that are newer to selling AWS as well, so there's a lot of great sales training, as well as some brandable marketing campaigns to help with that digital demand generation that I mentioned. Excellent, so we covered a lot today. <laughs> Thank you for going so quickly through this with me. Um, I'm so excited about SMB. As I said, we're making a big investment from AWS, and we're excited to share in that with you. Please contact me if you want to discuss further. I'd really happy to talk with you. Um, if there's three things that you take away from this presentation, I'd love for you to learn more about this customer engagement incentive and see how you can leverage it inside your business. Use that sales and marketing guide. Again, let me know any feedback. Um, and then add your SMB focused offerings through the APN. We're really looking for how can we promote more offerings that are specifically tailored to a small and medium customer. Um, so please, you know, go through that process to make sure that your offerings are known through APN, that we recognize you as an SMB partner, and that we can go, go to market with you together. All right. Thank you so much for attending.